mean, to be fair, I've been out a long time, and I can't even remember the last time I had to actually sit down and tell someone my coming out story. For the record, the coming out story is like a first date classic for us gays, if today's going well. <laughs> it's this one thing that you share in order to break the ice. Well, I am lucky enough not to have had a first date since before the Y2K scare, since the 90s, when I met Marissa, and we've been together ever since. About seven years ago, well actually, exactly seven years ago, yesterday, uh, we decided to get married, and we had a full-on wedding ceremony, you know, like with a DJ and gowns and our families and flowers and a Madonna impersonator, you know, all those things <laughs> that make a real wedding. <laughs> Except for that one actual legal entity to call us married. But this was 2004, and gay marriage wasn't even a thought to us. So what we did was, you know, out and kind of radical and real. I mean, we promised it all right there in front of our family and our friends and her grandmother. You know, that's about as real as you can get. Well then, same-sex marriage started to pass in some states and suddenly it kind of felt like our marriage wasn't real enough anymore. It now mattered to people as to whether it was legal, because they would ask, you'd say you're married, and they say, oh, but oh, are you legally married? No. Um, it's like a wedding in Massachusetts was worth more. I, even though mine cost me more, okay? <laughs> so last year when marriage passed here in DC, we decided to do it again. And we planned a little ceremony in Rock Creek Park to do the paperwork. And to be honest with you, that's how I felt about it too. You know, we were just doing the paperwork. Because it wasn't gonna change anything. Our marriage was just as valid. When I heard, I solemnized this marriage according to the laws of the District of Columbia, it hit me. Things were gonna change because I felt differently. Being legally married, uh, how can I explain? Okay, you know like the first time you get bumped to first class and you get that pre-flight drink and they bring you that hand towel and you notice like how nice they are to you and all the like <laughs> makes me feel a part of something I didn't even know I wasn't a part of. It makes me feel legitimate, you know? Uh, in and out. <laughs> well, I was all full of big gay pride coming off of that when the very next week I was invited to go to Little Rock, Arkansas for a day of meetings with my client, Family Life. <laughs> now, Family Life runs marriage conferences for Christian couples to help them stay together and I'm all about staying together, and I love marriage, so I'm okay working for them. <laughs> Clearly, I didn't really think this through, you know? <laughs> uh, you know, I thought this would be like a regular business trip where you go and you kind of ask polite but not too personal questions, and then you get on with business. I wasn't in the Family Life compound more than five minutes when the first question hit me. I was there in the main hallway, surrounded by 15 volunteer missionaries. And they said, well, Molly, what does your husband do? <laughs> it's amazing the speed in which the human body reacts, because my socks filled up with sweat in a nanosecond. <laughs> and I felt all that big, gay courage drain from my body and fill my shoes. And I said the first thing that came to me, the truth, except for one part. He's a lobbyist. I couldn't believe I said it. Uh, me, I couldn't believe I said it, but I did. As the day went on, my paranoia grew. I felt like a Dallas fan in a Redskins game, you know? Like they could all pick me out, right? I mean, do Christians have gaydar? Because they were all looking at me, especially this one guy. He set off my ex-gay gaydar big time. <laughs> well, after lunch, we went into a conference room and they dimmed the lights and they were gonna show a movie about their work. And when the lights came down, I kinda got comfortable and lost myself, the way that you do when you go to the movies in the afternoon, kinda forget where you are. And their message was compelling. And it was kinda Deepak Chopper to me. And I found myself nodding my head. And then they started saying about kind of women's role in marriage and then about all the evil forces that are out there trying to tear down traditional marriage. And I woke up and I remembered where I was, 
And I pulled my legs together because I realized I was sitting like a dyke. <laughs> and, and I remembered that they weren't talking about my marriage. So I made up an excuse to get out of there right away. I said my flight had changed. And as soon as I got into my rental car, I started to cry. But I wasn't just crying. I mean, I was bawling, like harder than I have since maybe I was four, right? And all this feeling of sadness came over me that I haven't felt in a really long time. And I made a promise to myself. I said, you know, I'm not gonna be, like, I'm not gonna lie just to make sure people don't feel comfortable. I'm not gonna do that anymore. But you know, that's a lot easier promise to keep when you live inside of like a perfectly crafted bubble, inside of a 75% uh, gay neighborhood in a 95% democratic city. It's a lot harder when you go outside your bubble and into someone else's. But I refused to live in this bubble. And that's how I ended up the very next month in the Delhi airport. This petite security guard was standing there with Marissa and my passports in her hand. She was reading the standard US customs questionnaire. Are you two related? Well, before Marissa could say anything, I said the first thing that came to me. The truth. Yeah, we're married. I don't know who was more surprised, Marissa or the security guard. <laughs> Both of their faces went red. Married? Uh, yeah, we're married. Two of us in the United States. It's, uh, it's legal there. Uh, well, <laughs> actually, no, I mean, not in the whole US, you know. In the state where, well, actually, we don't live in a state. It's uh, just a Columbia and a taxation thing. Yeah, that's uh, in the region, in the region where we live, we're legally married. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I have heard of such a thing, but I have never seen it. <laughs> Who is the man? Yeah. Oh! <laughs> uh, I'm not really sure what you mean by that, but uh, we both work, if that's what you mean. <laughs> we both work. In America, it's like that, you know. <laughs> she got serious. What about your parents? Oh, what do they think? Are they, are they okay with it? Are they happy? Oh, well, uh, yeah. Um, you know, it was hard at first, but uh, they came around, you know, they love us and, and we love them and so they just want us to be happy. So we're all happy. Everybody's happy. <laughs> <laughs> if you are happy and they are happy, then I am happy. <laughs> and she moved her head like that in the way that Indian people do to let you know everything's okay. <laughs> well, we're gonna fast, because as we moved through the airport, it seemed like every single security guard or ticket taker had a big grin on their face. And I did too. I, I had a huge grin on my face, and I was walking through the airport holding my wife's hand, and I was grinning because they knew that I was married and accepted, that I was married in the United States. In the whole country, okay, just in the region where I live. <laughs> but I was married. Coming out is feeling very 2011. 